If somebody said that to me, I might move locations because I'm, I'm assuming they're probably gonna follow me home. I don't care how good that date is, big no-no. Clayton, it's very cool to have you here with us today. In honor of you becoming the new Bachelor, we're gonna show you a few ranker lists all around dating, and we're gonna see if you think the public nailed these lists or if they need a bit of a re-rank. Okay, I'm ready. Ballpark, how many first dates have you gone on in your life? Oh man, I guess if you wanna count the 31. Outside of those, like let's just take those out, I mean maybe five or 10. So kind of a pro. So this first one is about the best first date ideas. All right, number 10, we have eating ice cream, visiting an amusement park, going to the beach, having a picnic, watch movies at the drive-in, going out to dinner, taking a stroll in the park, visiting the museum or aquarium, go stargazing, number one, watch the sunset. I think you can have a lot of fun with some of these. They just want something simple. I can see a little couple switches I might make. Perfect, so this is what the public thinks. We are here for what you think. I think the one that stood out to me right away was visiting the museum or aquarium on Michelle's journey I got to go to a museum like that was so much fun there's just so much that you can do and so much you can learn number two it's probably taking a stroll in the park for a first date I think sometimes people are you know they're nervous what are we going to talk about with stroll in the park you can sometimes get some interesting characters there's just so many different things that you can find yourself getting caught up in just random conversation is there anything that you're like that's not a good first date idea I hate to say it but eating ice cream I will eat ice cream but I just try to stay away from them because I know if I didn't I'd be a couple extra size is bigger. You know, watching a movie at the drive-in, I would probably put that at nine. A first date's about getting to know somebody and talking, and unless like we just straight up pick a terrible movie that like I know I'm not gonna be into. I watch movies so that I can actually pay attention to what's happening. I wanna say stargazing for three because space is fascinating, look at the stars. I think that opens up the whole call to conversations of the unknown. Like, I don't like to be like, what's your favorite color? And that's like watching paint dry. I wanna be able to ask these in-depth questions that really kind of show me who somebody is. Going to the beach, I'm gonna keep it at eight where it is right now. I don't know if I'm ever really graceful when I'm at the beach. I end up finding a way to swallow my salt water. Like a week later, you find sand and crevices and you're like, where, like, how is this still here? And then you start to question your own health. Is anything I'm doing sanitary? Yeah. So. <laughs> the number one slot here was watch the sunset. Where are you gonna put that one? I'll put that at the four spot because I think that's really romantic. I'm guessing this isn't the only thing you're doing that day. Be a very short date if you just yeah. watch the sunset and that's it. You're going to have to be on your best game. I mean, you're going to have to be able to be spitting romantic game. And I think you got to capitalize in that moment and go for it, champ. But you got to be confident for that one. I'm going to go ahead and put going out to dinner. That's something that I think I did most traditionally. You get to dress up a little bit. You get have a nice meal, but more so than anything, you can really learn a lot about someone in a couple hours. I'll go picnic over amusement park because picnic also is another romantic type of environment. I think that if you're taking in the scenery, it can be a really beautiful moment. I think it can really take you places. To me, an amusement park is more kind of like a movie. Again, you can have fun, but you're not having to focus primarily on just the conversation. I'm a big talker, so anything that kind of takes away the ability for me to talk is gonna probably fall low on the list. All right, so I gotta ask, is this list locked? I'm gonna lock it. Yeah, I feel all confident. Right. This list is the worst first dates of all time. Number 10 is showing up for them just to leave. Yikes, that hurts. I remember there was a date I went on and she told me I have a birthday party to go to. We were friends on Snapchat, so let's just say later that I saw some videos. I didn't see any balloons or candles. Okay, number nine is being told to impress them. I was at a speed dating event. The guy sits down across from me and he says, you have six minutes to impress me and explain why I should pick you. I've never speed dated, but if somebody said that to me, I would probably just shake their hand and be like, I'm gonna save you six minutes and just get up and walk out. I like confidence, but I do not like cockiness, so pump the breaks, all right? Number eight, mentioning how soon they want kids. The girl showed up to our first date and said that she wanted five kids with the first kid coming within the next 11 months. Does that mean she wants to like try to have a kid at two months in? If you're giving me 11 months to work with, I might be able to say, okay, like you're giving me some time. If you tell me like I have to have a kid in 11 months. Yeah, again, that's another one where I think you, you stand up and you say, hey, I forgot to lock my car and you uh, hightail it. All right, number seven, talking about money. I told her I worked part time and she started bragging about her expensive car and our conversations went nowhere the entire time. I had this old car and I loved it. It was a Pontiac vibe and I called it a weed out machine. If a woman ever saw my car and then they end up texting me back, then I knew they weren't in it for the money. When he's not going to buy me happiness, I want to make sure I find a genuine person. So I'm not a fan of that either. These are all terrible. 
Okay, so forgetting their wallet, the guy had balls to order very expensive items. I ate a salad. I figured it was his lucky day. I never talked to him again. If someone told me straight up they forgot their wallet, I'd just laugh it off. I don't know. To me, that's not the worst thing in the world. I'm just, it's like, listen, I can't already plan to pay for it anyway. So I'm just hoping the conversation is decent before all that so that I don't feel bad about paying it. Fair enough. Number five, bringing a friend. My boyfriend brought his sister to our first date. It was weird. She got too drunk and then cried. I mean, she didn't say ax. She said my boyfriend. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. Maybe not a bad idea. You bring a third person in just in case the conversation gets a little dry. Clearly this worked. Maybe that's actually one of the better ideas. All right, number four, when they were done with the date, he accidentally said, I love you. Big no-no. I don't care how good that date is. If somebody said that to me, I might move locations because I'm, I'm assuming they're probably gonna follow me home. Number three, one time a guy leaned over, deeply smelled a lock of my hair within the first couple minutes of our meeting. I made up an excuse and left. Listen, some people, they're bold, right? And they, they go for it all. I don't know if this man thought that he was gonna differentiate himself. I would not smell someone's hair within the first few minutes. That's a little bit too bold for my liking. Number two, this girl had an actual paper checklist. She scored my answers on a 10 point scale. As long as they weren't that serious. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna grade you. I think this actually would be very funny and unique. I don't know if I should check this box and you're kind of like sitting there together laughing about it like hold on let me defend myself all right in the number one slot he brought himself two packs of pork rinds opened both bags separated them by most crunchy to least crunchy and then would pick up two at a time and ask her which one she would eat next that's a power move this man is a man after my heart i mean for one i love food this one <laughs> had to watch me eat for like for two hours straight they would there would be no second date so <laughs> yeah all right we're gonna have you re-rank this list number one is the worst of the worst saying i love you that's just overkill smelling the lock of hair i mean that's just <laughs> come on man okay what is one you can recover from that and we'll put that one at 10. having the paper checklist i don't know to me like that could be taken in a, in a fun way with that i would say forgetting their wallet i just assume i'm just paying it the first day anyways what's the number three slot no go terrible first date talking about money like am i supposed to be impressed by how much money you make that's not why i'm there being told to impress them. Listen, this is a two-way street. It's supposed to be a 50-50 kind of thing. Let's go back to number eight. I think showing up for them to leave. I commend somebody if they can just stand up and say, you know what, hey, like, I'm just not really into you. I don't want to like drag this on anymore. That's actually, to me, really respectful. And now we've got the worst of the worst to the public, which was the two packs of pork rinds date. I think that's just so random. To me, I love that. So I think that guy had a great sense of humor. I'm going to put that towards the bottom. Okay, so we're going to put that one at seven. And then five would be mentioning how soon they want kids. Six bringing a friend. Okay, so your list then, how does that sound? Lock it, Kyle. I'm in. I feel good. You nailed the first date ideas. You nailed the worst first dates. We want you to put together top five qualities that are most important to you when looking for a partner. Number one, sense of humor, by far. Somebody that can make me laugh. There's nothing that really goes above that. I would say actually, number two, like a great listener. Or how about a great communicator? Because that goes with listening and speaking. If you don't have that, the relationship won't last. Three would be goal-oriented. Yeah, I really like somebody that has goals that they're chasing after, and I want to be able to support them through it. Four, I'm going to say, ooh, I'm going to say independent. I like somebody that's independent that they want to bring somebody in their life, but they don't need anybody. They just want someone. So I, I think that's important for someone to have that quality. And one more thing. I'm going to go with active. That's just because I'm active myself. So I like somebody that likes to get out and about and do all the outdoor kind of things. Thank you so much for coming in. Re-ranking list, putting your own list together. Really great to meet you. Thanks for watching this episode of Re-Rank. Make sure to tune in to The Bachelor starting January 3rd, 8, 7 Central on ABC. Thanks everybody for watching. Well, you know, 9 and 10, I hope aren't done together because if you eat a bunch of ice cream and then you go into an amusement park, unless you want somebody to watch you projectile vomit all over the place, I think that's probably not safe to put those two together. 